guys, it's Nick Schultz from Crank Software, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Terizon platform uh, that's offered by Toradex. And uh, we are super excited about this because Terizon is a, a platform based on a, a Linux base that allows you to run containerized applications. And that's uh, really awesome for a number of different reasons, but mostly is that it allows you to have a very clean separation between your different applications and their dependencies. And that works perfectly for Crank Software and the storyboard methodology. So we're going to quickly walk through and show you how to get up and running. Uh, the first thing is you need to go through and get yourself some hardware from Toradex. In our case, I'm using a IMX6 SOM with a 10 inch capacitive display. And this is available for a number of different hardware platforms. Um, after you go through the getting started steps, so everything that's outlined here on their website, website so unpacking the hardware, uh, flashing the ET installer to it, and then downloading the Horizon Core uh, image with Docker runtime, you are ready to go. In, um, in this case, I'll quickly jump over. You can see I have a platform here. And it has the Horizon base image, and um, it's ready to go. So you can see if I were to do ifconfig, you can see I have my IP address there, and um, we're ready to run some containers. The first thing that we need to do is we need to download a container that contains the Weston dependencies. And this is something that Storyboard uses. So whenever we want to do any rendering or video or compositing, anything like that, uh, we're going to be leveraging Weston in this case. So there's a container that contains all of that and makes an interface available to us. So we'll go ahead and grab this. If you've never used Docker before, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of documentation available on their website. But the important thing to notice is that in this command, we are pulling down a um, container image from the Terizon organization, and it is the RM32v7 Debian Weston image. The tag on it, so the version is Buster, so that's one way you, you version everything. And um, you know, you could imagine as uh, software upgrades, there might be new versions, but we're going to use that one. The other thing we do is specify the restart always command. So that just means every time we reboot the board or if we were to uh, inadvertently tear the container down, it'll restart for us. So our dependencies are always going to be there. Jump back over to the terminal, paste that in. I've already downloaded the image. Um, so just for the sake of expediency, there's no reason for you guys to watch it download and unpack everything. Uh, the tool would do it all for you. But now if we run the docker ps command, you can see here that we have a container up and running. The next step that we need to do is if we want to start uh, playing around and, and dropping our own applications on there, we want to create a directory that we can deploy our applications to. So we're just simply going to go ahead and create a directory, um, crank scp. This is going to be under the Horizon home root directory. Paste that in. So you can see I can drop into the crank SCP directory and the fully qualified path there is slash home Horizon crank SCP. The final step is we want to actually download the crank software Horizon image for the IMX6. So this is the specialized runtime and application that we've already packaged up and the uh, 6.1 version of storyboard. So you can imagine as um, we support different hardware platforms or newer versions of storyboard are released, then you can imagine this path changing up a little bit. So it could be something like the IMX8 tagged at 6.1 or in the future 6.2 or other, other releases. So we'll go ahead, grab that, copy that, paste it into our terminal. Again, it's already downloaded, so it'll be very, very quick. We have some debug output here just telling us of what demo application we're starting up. So it's a Vitals demo, um, it's 1280 by 720 resolution, and the internal IP address of the container that's running. If I quickly switch over to my webcam, you can see here that I've got the application up 
on the display. Uh, there's a couple of trends moving around here. I'm also able to interface. So if I were to touch the menu button, I can go to a patient screen. This is where I can interact with a 3D model of a patient. You see spinning around there, looking at any injuries, get status updates. All in all, a pretty cool application. But if you actually want to go playing around with storyboard and building up your own UI, it's pretty simple to do that as well. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to close out this container that's currently running. So control P and Q will break us out of that Docker instance. If we run the Docker PS command. You can see again that I have two uh, containers up and running. We'll go ahead and we'll close the, the crank software to Ryzen one. So Docker stop. Put in the ID of that container. This will go through and tear it down. And then we'll go over and switch to storyboard. So if you've never used uh, storyboard, it's an awesome tool for building rich interactive uh, user interfaces for embedded systems. So this is the welcome screen here. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll close that. And we can actually import um, a design in a Photoshop file that's already been created for us. So I'll navigate through, I'll navigate to my Photoshop file. This is something from our training material. So it's a home automation, it's kind of like a, a wall panel, something you might see. If I hit finish, we're simply going through parsing the file, laying out the UI for us, importing images, fonts, things like that. You can see here we have uh, a couple screens built up for us and the underpinnings of what uh, looks to be a pretty neat application. I'll just quickly go hook up some interactions. So, you know, if we wanted to press a button, we could switch screens quickly. So in this case, we hook up uh, the button for the climate screen. Use a touch event. This touch event will trigger an action. So we'll look for a screen transition to a nice sliding path. So again, going to the climate destination. Do a couple options here. So we only want to slide content that's different and pick a direction. Uh, I'll say move in you know, from the right. Hit finish. You can see now we've got our event action binding showing up in our actions panel. I can just go ahead, copy that, paste it onto our security button and just modify the destination screen to go to the security screen. And if we save that and simulate our application, you can see here we have our, our application. I can hit the security button, the content slides in, and we can go back to the main climate screen. So we're happy with that. We want to see what that actually looks like on our embedded hardware. This is where we can go over, configure this for an SCP deploy, open up our configuration panel. I'll just quickly open this up. By default, our export is set to go to the file system that we're currently working on, but I will go ahead and change that to be remote deploy over SCP. And this is where we go through and we uh, add in some parameters. So the IP address for our target is very easy to, to grab. I have config. You can see our address here, 172.16.0.160. Put in our username and password. So when you go through the setup, you'll set up these values. And then finally, the output directory. So if we go, go back here, Again, this fully qualified path, so home, Horizon, crank, SCP. Hit apply. Run. That will deploy everything over the network interface. 
when it's completed, we'll get a dialog popping up to say everything's good. Depending on the size of your application, this might take uh, a little bit longer, but you can see here, everything was exported to this location. If we go back to our, if we go back to our uh, terminal, we can then see the application uh, exported GAP file there. So um, the last thing that we want to do is if we launch our application again, so running the Docker container, and remember if we look at our command for run, we're simply mapping this home to rise and crank directory into the container space, and it's going to look in there when it launches up for an application. If I open up the webcam beside it, so you can see here we don't actually have anything running on our hardware right now, if I execute the command, we'll see some debug output popping in, and you can see our application is up and running. Uh, I have touch enabled, so we have the nice transitions, everything sliding back and forth, and that's how easy it is to test and prototype and deploy onto a embedded platform running Terizon.